Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have exponents on one side and a number on the other side. So we have 5 to the power x minus 3 to the power x equals 16. I know at this point, probably all of you or most of you figured out the answer. But is that the answer or is that the only answer? Are there any other solutions? How can we approach that? So let's go ahead and do a little bit of manipulation here. Since the 5 is the higher power of, uh, or I shouldn't say power, it's the base, right? Okay, great. So since 5 is a higher base, I'm going to divide everything by 5 to the power x. So we're going to start by dividing everything by 5 to the power x. It'll become clear why I'm doing this uh, in a little bit. Let's divide 5 to the power x by 5 to the power x and then 3 to the power x by 5 to the power x, and then 16 by 5 to the power x. Obviously, 5 to the power x is never 0 unless x is negative infinity or approaches negative infinity or whatever. It can never be 0. It's always positive. So this is okay to do. Now, 5 to the power x divided by 5 to the power x is obviously 1, as you know. And this expression, because they have the same exponent, can be written as 3 to the... I mean 3 over 5 to the power x. And the right hand side is what it is, 16 divided by some power of 5. Okay, now when you look at this equation carefully, uh, this equation uh, has an interesting feature or property or whatever you want to call that. What is it? It is the fact that 3 over 5 is less than 1. Okay, so so what about it, right? If you have an exponential function, y equals b to the power x, and b is less than 1, then you're basically talking about a decreasing function, as you know from exponential equations. If b is greater than 1, or I should say between 0 and 1, uh, wait a minute, okay. If b is greater than 1, sorry about that, If uh, obviously b, we want b to be positive, so b is positive in this case. So if b is between 0 and 1, then our function is decreasing. If b is greater than 1, then it's going to be increasing, as you know from e to the power x or 2 to the power x or whatever. In this case, we have a decreasing function. Great. So 3, to, 3 over 5 to the power x is decreasing. This is decreasing. Let's call that DECR. And on the right-hand side, I have 16 divided by 5 to the power x. As you know, 5 to the power x is increasing. Why? Because 5 is greater than 1, so you're going to get something like this. So the denominator of a function is going to increase uh, without any bounds. So 16 divided by that is going to decrease. This is also a decreasing function. So what is the big deal about it? Like you have two decreasing functions? No. The left-hand side, we are subtracting the decreasing function from 1. In other words, we are negating the function. Notice the negative sign. If you multiply a decreasing function by negative 1, it is going to be increasing because you're basically flipping it, right? So we have an increasing function plus 1. Plus 1 is not going to make any difference. It's just going to move it up. So we have an increasing function on the left-hand side and a decreasing function on the right-hand side. What is that supposed to mean? Well, these functions are only going to intersect at one point if they do intersect at all, right? Great. So that's one way to look at the problem. I want to show you an alternative uh, approach here. Not a whole different method, but if you add 3 over 5 to the power x to both sides, you're going to, you're going to get the following. 3 over 5 to the power x plus 16 over 5 to the power x. Now look at it from this perspective. On the right hand side, we have two decreasing functions. If you add two decreasing functions, then you get a decreasing function. Why? Because their first derivatives are negative, and the, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives, and they're going to be negative. So when you add two negative numbers, you're going to get a negative number. Or there is another way to prove it as well, but I just used calculus because it's easier. So we have a decreasing function, we have another decreasing function, and the sum is also decreasing. So on the right hand side, I have a function that is decreasing, no matter how it goes. And on the left hand side, I have a constant function. So that means this function is going to be a horizontal line. So you have like a, you know, a decreasing function and a horizontal line. Now, let's go ahead and make it a little bit more accurate. Sorry, I don't have a Desmos drawing of this, but I'm just going to do a hand drawing. I hope you don't mind. If, if you just evaluate our function as at, at x equals um, 0, for example, this is going to be um, 1 plus 16. So our y-intercept is going to be at 70, pretty high, right? And are we going to have an x-intercept? 
Who knows? Now, what happens if x approaches infinity, right? As x approaches infinity, this is going to approach 0, and this is going to approach 0. So our function is going to approach 0, but since everything is going to stay positive, our function is kind of going to stay above the x-axis. Something like that. doesn't really matter. The details are not that important. But we do have another function which is horizontal, right? And that is y equals 1. This is y equals 1. This is y equals 3 over 5 to the power x plus 16 over 5 to the power x. And they will intersect at one point only. That's the whole point, okay? All right, great. So now, what is that supposed to mean? It means that there is only one solution to this equation. So let's go ahead and uh, write our original equation one more time. Our original problem was 5 to the power x minus 3 to the power x equals 16. So we're saying, basically saying that this equation has a single solution. And how do you find that? Guess and check. Is guess and check a problem solving method? Yes, it is. Okay. You may disagree if you want, but that is a problem solving method. So if x is equal to, for example, 1, I get 5 minus 3. That's too small. How about x equals 2? Let's see. 5 squared minus 3 squared is 25 minus 9, and that is equal to 16. Bingo. We got it. Okay, great. So x equals 2 is a solution, and x equals 2 is the only solution to this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.